Hi again, and welcome back to Tartarian Hawaii. I want to apologize first off for my lack of technological skill. Um, I know enough just barely to to take a raw video footage and upload it to YouTube, and that's about it. But I do enjoy researching photos on the web and um, really love looking at old historical photos. They're not as easy to find as the modern ones. This is the Moana Hotel um, in Waikiki on Kalakaua Avenue. Of course, it looks much different now, and you can find plenty of pictures of that, but not many that uh, show it in its original condition, which I wonder what that was, being that there's so much uh, debris on the road here, and it's very um, sparsely populated in this photo anyway, and uh, almost looks like perhaps it's right after a hurricane or um, maybe right after the cataclysm because there's just uh, some damage that you can see and there's really basically no one around, there are no other buildings around, which is another indication that this may just have been, um, as they call it, a pocket of survival. And in another video, I'll, I want to, to give credit to all the people that I've watched in the recent past that this is not um, an idea that's an original with me as far as the old world perhaps being not so old and more recent than they tell us in history and um, and the photos that can give some evidence for that. In modern times this building would be seen surrounded by tall almost skyscraper-like uh, hotel buildings. Right on the other side of this building is the ocean. So from our perspective, it's right behind there. You can't see it in the photo because it's very grown up, um, almost wildly grown up on this side, and uh, not much going on around. Certainly not like Kalakaua Avenue in Waikiki is now. You can faintly see Diamond Head in the background so we can tell we're looking east in this photo down the road. And I'll show you what's on the other side of the street in a bit. I'll try not to make this too long. And I'm focusing on only one photo, so hopefully the video will stay shorter that way. And also, we can check out a lot of details in this one photo. Of course, you can see the old world style with the columns and a lot of archways. Again, as we talked about in the last video on Iolani Palace, it's not very easy getting building materials, especially large ones, like it would take for a building of this size, to Hawaii even nowadays. You know, it has to come, of course, by barge. And that makes me suspicious that this was another one of those found buildings that just so happened to survive um, some kind of a cataclysm or storm. One thing I thought that was interesting in this photo was up in the far upper right is the wire leading to the building. So that's some interesting tech for way back when. And I got out some uh, good magnifying glasses and checked this photo and it looks very much like there's a person standing in this archway with their arm leaning against the railing. So that'll give you an idea of the scale, too, of this building. And of course it has the, the lower floor windows that are just sort of peeking up from the ground, lending to the idea of the theory of the mud flood. And of course the, the stairs leading up into the middle of the building for um, an entrance. I always like to check the roof of these buildings. You can see a little something up there. But what was interesting about this one is you can barely see it. But right here you can see the uh, pole coming up out of the sidewalk, the dark pole. And if you look closely you can see crossbars for some kind of tech or utility pole. There's not much attached to it unless they've whited all that out too. But I found that interesting as well, because why would you need that 
at this um, stage and this era with nothing else really around unless there had been a lot more around and this is all that that survived in that area anyway on the road you can also see a lot of debris it looks like seaweed to me possibly piled up and then over here it looks like more indented like maybe some damage to the road again not really anyone around there is this one trolley I don't see really any people other than that one person that might be on the balcony of the hotel of course you can see the little pole here and then how it comes out over the trolley the trolley is quite large has an observation deck and then you can see the windows along the side and the track which also has a lot of debris on it so there's some clues in this photo that just don't quite add up to the history that they try to tell us to me it's like an interesting game of clue the uh, owner of the land that supposedly donated it to have the hotel built his name was mr. Peacock of all things and an Oliver Traphagen was the architect and builder of the hotel or that it's attributed to and he has many um, projects to his name in that era just like other architects of that time have a lot of elaborate projects to their name that I don't think even anyone could accomplish even nowadays not that many in their lifetime and his spanned from Minnesota to Hawaii which seems interesting too because that's pretty far uh, apart and apparently he started in Minnesota and then moved to Hawaii so it would make sense in that sense but even just to build this in that time that would kind of be a lifetime work I would think almost but he has many many diverse projects attributed to his name and, and my suspicion is that these handful of architects and landscape designers of that time like Olmsted is one of them too a landscape designer we can talk about him another time we knew about him from going to the Bach Tower Gardens in um, Florida but he is another one that has lots of projects to his name that what I think actually was happening in that time is there were a handful of people they could trust with the secret that these buildings were there and they probably did need some refurbishing I'm very sorry for the jiggling I'm recording um, from my iPad this photo but I'm trying to rest it on the photo so you can really see some of the details I always enjoy that in videos where they don't flip by the pictures too fast so that you can really look at everything and see something you might have missed like maybe there's some people standing on this little balcony here above the porte cochere area